All right, I have noon Eastern, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to welcome everyone to the VBase Exhibitor Booth Camp. My name is Alex Judge, NBA Marketing Manager and your webinar producer. Before we get started, I'd like to show you a few features of this webinar platform. We will be accepting questions to ask our speakers. To ask a question, please type it into the Q&A tab on your screen. Q&A for this webinar will be visible to all attendees. So if you see a question you like, feel free to upvote it so it gets pushed to the top of the list. A few VBase exhibitor resources can be found in the handout section and also keep your eye on the public chat as we will be adding links and additional updates throughout the duration of the webinar. With that, I'll hand it over to Chris Strong, NBAA Senior Vice President of Conventions and Membership. Chris, over to you. Thanks, Alex. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us today. I have the distinct honor of being able to introduce uh, my colleague, Linda Peters, who is our Vice President for Exhibits. Most of you know her. Many of you probably spoken to her this week. I also want to introduce uh, later on in the program, uh, Matt Thurber and Chad Trout-Vetter uh, from AIN. They are both veteran journalists uh, who are going to join us uh, to discuss how you can maximize your, your press coverage uh, going into VBase and probably beyond VBase ultimately. Um, so the purpose of this presentation today is to ask folks to step back a little bit and think about you know what exactly what they're doing at the show. And I know Linda and her team have worked really hard to um, create a number of videos and do uh, uh, you know, live webinars to help our exhibitors understand the technical aspects of how to use a chat room and how to upload information and, and those things. This is a little different. This is, we're calling it boot camp. It's a play on the word boot, boot camp and boot camp as you think about it is a, is a very basic training. So some of this is going to be basic, but it's basic training for a virtual show as opposed to basic training for it, for a live show. Um, so let's, let's jump right in. Uh, first, you know, we NBA has participated in, in a couple of shows with Boos, and one of the things that that you know we learned twice, unfortunately, was that we weren't really as prepared as we could be, and that's part of what's driving this conversation for me. Um, and so, you know, for the next time we participate in the show, we're going to walk through the same things. But as you're participating in the show, the very first thing anybody should do is to consider your objectives, and, and it can be any of these these six items is your objective to just get your brand out there. You knew you want the, the brand out or you want to reinforce the brand in the marketplace, or there's objective to make sure that a new product or a new service that you're announcing in the marketplace is, is brought to light. Um, are you trying to generate leads? There's a number of ways, I think fascinating ways within this platform to generate uh not only a high number of leads, probably a higher number of leads than you will ever receive from a show, but also quality leads. And if that's your objective, then you know, state that and understand that and begin to, to think about your booth engagement from, from that um, from that perspective. Uh, and uh, you know, finally, and leads and list building are, are kind of the same, but finally also is your objective, your press engagement. And I, I say all that and they all seem very basic. They all take you know, a different level of focus and a different level of, of a different type of technique to, to maximize. So uh, pre-show tips for inviting your customers. I'm gonna hand it over to Linda to talk about some of these areas. Hi everyone. Um, well, now that we're about a little less than two weeks out, uh, now is the time that you really should be amplifying your participation at VBase. Each day of promoting will build awareness to attendees to come visit you at your booth. Um, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Use the tools that we already have or that you already have at your fingertips and can be found on our marketing toolkit, which is online uh, on the VBase website. Um, some specific things, you've got um, a, a product demonstration or something, a, a keynote or a key speaker at your booth. Get Make sure you promote that and invite people to your booth for that. Um, Giveaways are always a great item to promote in advance um, and, and have a unique item that will uh, bring people to your booth so that they can um, sign up and, and, and um, win that item or uh, have that giveaway sent to them. Um, another way is uh, using your website and email signatures. Make sure everybody on your staff has a logo banner um, in their email signature to help promote the, the VBase uh, event. I mean, they are your best promoters, having your staff have this information on their email signatures. Um, also research the speaker list and invite the relevant um, prospects to your booth. Um, there's a lot of activities that will be taking place during uh, the event and you wanna make sure those speakers can stop by your booth and see what you guys have to offer. So let me let me add on a couple of things. First of all, with regard to 
being specific to what's happening in your booth. When we think about V-Base, you know, we market the V-Base brand and we know that, that X amount of folks will tune in just because it's V-Base, but we also know that inside of V-Base, there's a lot of really good things happening. And so as you see our marketing, we cast a pretty wide net with the V-Base brand and then we are going down to, okay, and Dirk's, is, Dirk's Bentley is going to speak. Uh, um, there's going to be thought leadership at, uh, uh, events. There's going to be you know, these exhibitors on hand. And we, we try to be, become very defined in this space because the defined is what is attractive. Uh, you know, noting that we have a show is one thing, but defining that. And I think you need to think of your booth kind of the same way. It's, it, you know, folks will know you have a booth there, but what's going on in the booth? That's what's going to draw the eyes. That's what's going to make, make your booth sticky. And, and talking about um, giveaways and led you on this, this, this webinar, a little hidden secret. So, you know, we uh, anticipate you know, thousands. We have uh, almost 1,900 uh, attendees signed up right now. We anticipate being, I think close to 8,000, I hope, um, exhibitors, or excuse me, attendees. Those attendees, uh, due to GD GDPR, we have to ask them in advance if they are willing to allow us to share their information. Uh, last time I looked, 60% of them said, yes, you can share my information if I come into a booth, or if somebody's a sponsor, you can share my information with, with those groups. So you've still got 40% of the marketplace who is not sharing their information. One of the really important things about giveaways is that if somebody's registering for a giveaway in your booth, they have to share their information. You, you know, it doesn't make any sense for them to register for a giveaway and not tell you who they are. And so, as you think about giveaways in particular, it's the it's an, the next way to peel back uh, the layer of, of who is this that's coming to the booth. You'll you'll know some demographic information on some of the folks that don't uh, identify themselves, but the giveaways are a really good way to to understand exactly who this person is and, and engage with the person that comes into your booth. All right, next up is, is the keyword, um, keyword search. And this seems so intuitive, but be sure to include keywords that really link to the content areas of your booth so that you're optimizing the platform search engine. You know, you want to make sure you're choosing meaningful keywords so that that makes it easy for the attendee to find you and it lets you rank higher in that search. So, for example, if if you're if it's a fuel provider, I'll use that as an example. Don't just have fuel as as your keyword search. You want to be able to dive deeper into some of your booth content areas that maybe make you rank higher um, than your competitors in that keyword search area. Uh, and also add on, on keywords. Put your company name in. As crazy as that seems, we definitely have seen folks who will put in keywords associated with what they do, their product, their service. But they don't put Honeywell in. And so if somebody goes in and searches for Honeywell, they don't necessarily fall into your booth. And so that seems super basic, but we see enough of it to know that you've got to do some of the basics. Uh, and you also may want to put um, your speakers' names in there. If you have speakers that are in the thought leadership sessions, put their names in there because it will show only not only where they're in the education sessions, but they will also be associated with your booth and your brand. Um, Matt and Chad are going to talk about the uh, press releases, so I'm going to leave that to them. But you know, as you're kind of working through a checklist of things you want to do, we do have a an area where you can you know, post press releases. Actually, you send that through to our team, and we'll put we'll put the press release up. Uh, we're going to promote it. We want to make sure our shows have been, I think, really good at, at promoting news, and, and uh, you know, that we want to make sure that we're maximizing that for all the companies that are involved. Uh, so pre-show social media, this is not my vast area of expertise, but I know enough about it to, to be conversant, uh, at least, uh, first of all, before, and even during the show, make sure that you're using hashtag V base on, on every post that, you know, the eyes are going to follow that. We know particularly running into all of our events, uh, even the smaller ones, regional forums, uh, you know, we get a great deal of play using that, using that hashtag. And so if you are promoting something in association with the this, this show on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or any of those social media outlets, uh, make sure you're using the, the hashtag. Um, I think the other thing that's in, important is that, again, you become specific. If you just say you're going to be at the show, uh, that, that's one thing. But if you say this is going at the show, you, you just, you're going to catch more eyes. Uh, and I, I'll use an example. Last night I was on Facebook and, and I work for NBAA, so the NBA stuff follows me everywhere. And, and but it drew my eyes that Dirk Bentley is 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 going to be our keynote presenter. He's also singing. Uh, he's singing three songs for us at the keynote, which is fantastic. But what drew my eyes was on Facebook. It didn't say V Base. It didn't say Dirk Bentley. It said V Base Dirk Bentley, and it had two pictures of Dirk's singing. And you know those. It, it's it's a small thing, but if you can post it, it, an image or a video in your social media, uh, I definitely encourage you to do that.
Lynn, do you want to talk about team? Yeah, definitely. So um, many of you guys have probably been involved in some of our conversations already as we've been walking through the chat feature um, with our, our webinars this week. But this is definitely a key, el a key element or key area that you want to focus in on. And there's probably three or four staff roles that you want to make sure you have set up within the booth um, so that that you can plan in advance and make sure your team members are all well trained and all staff are well informed of the process that you guys are going to have set up for fielding the different um, attendee booth engagement and questions that come in. So some of the bullet points there are the key areas, you know, you've got contact requests that will come in, you know, make sure you've got team members that um, definitely are, are, uh, have, are able to respond to those quickly and who's going to be responding to those. Um, the chat board as well, um, you, you might want to even plan in advance and have some of your um, normal questions that come up at like an FAQ that you can kind of have those readily available and be able to chat with a response back to the questions. Um, and then of course the, the real time data, um, all booths have that data analytics feature. Make sure that you guys are monitoring that or have a specific person monitoring that throughout the day of the show so that you know the customers that are coming into your booth and what they're viewing and, and you can get information back out to those, those, um, those prospective uh, customers, attendees. Um, and teamwork on chat lounges and sessions. Definitely, there's chat lounges that are, are throughout the, the platform and, and your team should be visiting those different chat lounges that are taking place throughout the days of the show. So they're outside of the booth and go and engage and it's, it's another way to network with um, all the attendees on the, on the VBase website platform. So, well, I'll talk about the real-time data for a moment. So, so you don't, actively know if someone has walked into your booth. It doesn't show up that Chris Strong has walked in, into your booth. You will actively know if they walk into your booth and they engage with you on chat, and you can certainly find folks within within the show. Monitoring the real-time data, it, it refreshes as often as you want to refresh it. So if you want to look at that data every minute, you can tell who has come to the booth. Not only can you tell who's come to the booth, but you can also tell you know, what they've clicked on or what they've put into their, their backpack. And so having someone monitor that in real time gives you the opportunity, even if they've come to your booth and now left your booth, to either chat them or email them instantly and say, hey, you know, I saw you came by. I'm really glad you came by. I just wanted to make sure that we had a connection or or engage with them in some way. And you know, again, well, you know, we this is not a real-time platform in the sense that somebody's going to walk up and you can you know, hand them something or, or, or shake their hand, but but that's a way to to make things pretty real time. If they just come to your booth and you know they were there ten minutes ago or fifteen minutes ago, they take the and, and there's some of interest. I wouldn't necessarily engage with everybody who comes by the booth, but if there's someone who's of interest, they take a moment to thank them. At the very least, be grateful and say, "Hey, thanks for coming by. You know, can, can I give you a call in a day or so and just just and just follow up? Uh, we want to make this as engaging as possible for you and for the um, for the attendees." Uh, script, we talk about this all the time um, internally. When we go to any of our shows, NBA actually always has a script. It's not necessarily for the booth, although it can often be for the booth, but it's for the entire show. You know, what are we talking about at NBA? What's important to us? If someone says, what's going on at NBA? We want to have two or three things that everybody's on point about, everybody's talking about. And it seems you know, like such a something you shouldn't have to think about, but it totally is in this virtual experience. And I'll go back to the show that shows that we participated. We weren't prepared. You know, and, and I you know, was working with the folks who were working the, the, the event and they put me into the booth. And I said, what are we what are we doing here? What are we saying? Well, you know, it, we don't, it kind of depends and depends on who's coming in. And, and you know, just what my, my request is just think about it a little bit and be prepared and make sure that you're, you're on message and on point uh, in terms of being prepared. There we, you probably will have some some basic FAQs that you're always asked. It's, I think it's good uh, in a chat function, particularly to have a cut and paste that you can put in there. And then also consider in advance what links you want to send folks. You want to be as responsive to folks as, as quickly as possible. And so it does take some preparation. Again, it seems so very basic, but if you don't do it, you're going to get into the, the platform day of and, and you know, things are going to start moving. You're, you're going to be a step behind where I think you want, probably want to be. Um, and then you know, st staying on uh, 
pre-show. Oh, Linda, were you going to speak? Sorry. No, you got it. <laughs> uh, there is an exhibitor preview day on, on November 30th to test, test drive the platform. It'll, it'll be open on, that's a Monday. Uh, we you know, want you to go in. You, you need to walk around the platform a little bit. You need to understand how the chat function works. I know that uh, Linda and her team are doing a great deal of education, technical education on that. They'll continue to do that. They'll answer your questions for you on the 30th. But we, we highly encourage. I mean, this is just different. This is just different. We highly encourage you to go in and understand what's in your booth and why it's there and to think it through and then to share it with, with um, your team that's working the booth, first of all. And then also I would – Make sure that your entire organization understands that you're participating in, in VBase. And, and we're as guilty as anybody. We are actually running an event here in two weeks. And I'm still on phone calls with our teams. Like, when is that again? And what are we doing? I'm like, well, you know, how can that be? We're running this thing. And so you know, I don't think that you need to overplay it, but it is important that you communicate to your entire uh, entire team in advance that you're going to be at, at uh, VBase. So I know that there's some questions lining up. I don't know, Alex, is there one or two that are, that, uh, are kind of populous enough that we want to answer here? Yeah. Yep. So how does staff get designated as staff? Is there a separate exhibitor registration? Um, I'll go ahead and answer that. Um, there is not a, a separate um, designated exhibitor registration. Um, if you can think of it this way, anybody that's registered for the VBase event is considered an attendee. And so um, the, this is where you might want to set up within your booth um, a, a um, like a booth chat area and designate your employees that kind of will manage the questions that come in with your booth um, um, in a group setting. Thanks. Is there another uh, question? Yeah, sure. Um, so how do we tell staff what to do in the booth? Uh, tell your staff. It's good. 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 <laughs> That is that is a good question. That's something you should plan for in advance and kind of know who it's going to be fielding, kind of catching the questions that will come through um, from the various attendees. And so it might be smart to have one or two kind of kind of like what you would do at a live event. They would be at the reception counter and say you would assign two people that kind of field the questions for that. Um, any questions that come in for the booth and then that they would be able to then um, hand those over to the appropriate folks on your staff to answer those questions. And they can, those staff folks can do that one-on-one -on -one, or they can do that through a, a, a group, a chat feature. Um, I think that's the best way to set that up um, so that you, you don't have a, a, a bunch of different um, employees answering different questions or answering questions. You wanna be all on the same page with, with your responses to the questions. And think, stay on that for just a second. Think about who is doing this. I mean, this, this is, I don't know that I would be necessarily the person you want to do that because I'm not the most tech savvy person. You need someone who's probably pretty limber in that space and then make sure that person's an, an introvert. We have uh, someone on our staff here at MBA who, whose name is Benjamin, who I love. He loves to go to shows, but he's my introvert. And, and he's, he's really smart, smartest person I know, but he is, is really hard in those settings because it's draining. And this is, this is a, an eight hour day. And so you need to have a team of two or three that you're thinking about that can be actively engaged and make sure you, pick, you, you, you think about picking the right, the right folks. Uh, one more question. Yep. We move on. Yep. How do we use this platform to execute live demonstrations in the booth? Is there a different platform we need access to? So let's on on that one. I, I, I'm I'm not going to steer away from it. That's a question, uh, Linda. If you can answer it quickly, that's really good. If not, you know, for okay. whoever asked that question, let's um, uh, go ahead and make sure that we're engaging either Linda or, or Maureen or Joe with uh, with that person that answered that question for them. But Linda, do you have a quick answer for that? Oh yeah, for for to do in a live demonstration in a booth, you can use one of your content areas within the booth. Um, but since it's something that you're going to do live, you would like to use like one of your own um, web platform providers to, in order to do that. So like a Zoom or GoToMeeting or something like that. So that all can be done within your booth. Um, however, you're gonna be wanting to use one of your platform providers. Um, like I said, like a Zoom or a GoToMeeting or something like that. Thanks. All right, so let's move to to during the show, and, and I should have probably set this up in advance. We have thoughts for obviously pre-show, which we covered, and then thoughts for during the show, and then a handful of thoughts for you know post-show. Uh, uh, first of all, you know, 
be active. It's just like a regular show. If, if, if you go to a regular show, you, we've all walked you know, by the 10 by 20 where two people are sitting there on their phones and they're hoping to God somebody you know, nudges them so they, 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 they can engage or maybe they hope nobody engage with them. And so you know, we just encourage you to, to, to be active. It sounds so simple, but if you, if you take those steps, you're just going to have a different show than if you passively sit back and, and, and wait to uh, engage in, in the, the uh, with the chat feature, I know that we've done some demos on that. It's, it is a primary resource uh, in terms of being able to, to communicate with the attendees and communicate with other booths and certainly communicate with, with our staff. Um, I mentioned it before, uh, the data is a big deal. The data is, is, is something that's really a powerful part of this, but you know, make sure you have somebody on staff who's monitoring the data to see who is coming by. Don't wait till the end of the day to do it. You know, do it, figure out your increment every half an hour. We're gonna you know, see who it is or whatever that increment is, but but monitor the data, um, and then attend the at different education sessions and, and topic lounges. And we covered this a little bit. I was in a, a webinar yesterday, similar to this, um, not a webinar, excuse me, a conference yesterday, and I was you know, sat in on a number of education sessions, and you could see who was in there, you could see who was talking, and I had folks who were engaging with me offline, people who knew me or didn't know me that well, who were like, hey, Chris, do you want to talk? Or, or they would text me, and, and you know, by having staff that's assigned to the education sessions and, and the topic lounges, you're going to you know, be closer to the attendance that you want to get to. The, the topic lounges, I believe we have 16 lounges, and they there are, there's a pilot's lounge and a cam lounge and a Yopro lounge. So we have a number of places for you and your team to be to be visible and apparent and, and relevant to, to conversations. And within those lounges, we're going to have you know, coffee chats at designated times, or we're going to have uh, you know, Q&A sessions. And so just you know, take, take the time to be active, certainly within your booth, but also to engage outside of your booth. Um, staying on social media you know, during the show, again, as I talked about uh, talked before, there is a, a ramp up that's going on right now with social media during the show. It's, it's you know, for live shows and, and even for some of the, uh, many of the um, virtual shows I've been a part of, it's, it's, it's a big deal. And so, you know, continue to do what you're doing, and, but you know, have that planned out in advance. Like every you know, two hours, we're going to put something out the door and it can be a booth image or, or, or a video um, or a product announcement that you're going to make. Um, uh, I'd also, you know, uh, take the time to give shout outs to people who've come by. I mean, people love recognition. So if somebody's come by your booth, you know them socially, you know them on LinkedIn, give, give them a shout out. And then I say it not only because the guys from AIN are on, but you mentioned the trade publications, you know, those folks, they will, they will re, re, uh, resend some of that or retreat, retreat or you know, whatever the, the right verb is. Uh, if you mention the different news organizations as you're putting things out the door, uh, often they will, they will pick up that thread. They will push that thread out, out for you. Uh, but you know, if you have a good social media team, be active. And if you don't have a good social media team, find somebody uh, who, who can at least for the day or two and make sure that, that you're promoting your brand uh, via social media. Um, Post-show. Uh, I guess a handful of things you should be thinking about post-show. Uh, first of all, the, first and foremost, the VBase platform is going to be open until December 31st, 2020. And, and as we talk to organizers, it is the gift that keeps on giving a little bit. I mean, our responsibility as a show organizer is to continue to promote the platform. We, we're going to do that. We're going to have, in case you've missed it, videos. We're going to have um, – uh, marketing is going to go out to our attendees and say, hey, we know you're interested in maintenance. And here's three or four things you missed in the maintenance area in terms of education sessions or booths that you could have attended. Um, we're going to promote that back out the door. Uh, you will not get a notification if somebody comes to your booth. Your booth is still going to be live. And so you, you know, need to have a plan to, uh, you know, come back to the platform and, and make the platform work for you. We're working to make this platform live and, and extend the value beyond just two days of the show. Uh, work your data quickly. I know that for the events that I attend, I do stop in a lot of booths because I want to see what booths um, you know, look like and, and you know, kind of what how they're presenting their booth. And I know that fully a third maybe of the people that I stop by and see ever respond back, which is probably what happens in real life as well. We all have big ambitions that we're going to engage. But this is a really good opportunity to set yourself apart. Uh, if you can respond, not respond quickly, but uh, you know, come back to folks within a, a couple of days. Hey, I, I saw you stop by the booth. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. Again, be grateful, but we appreciate you coming by. Is there any questions that I can answer or can, can we set up a phone call? Um, dive into the data because the data will not only tell you who came by, it'll tell you who they are and give you great demographic information, but the data will also tell you what they clicked on, what they looked at and, and allow you to make it, have a more informed um, conversation. 
uh, some other basic kind of you know blocking and tackling thing is is I know that we try to uh, divide uh, leads up into A, Bs, and Cs, um, meaning that if you if your target audience is a pilot, make sure that you segment all the pilots and make sure that you're treating them as your target audience. The Bs are someone who are, are pilot adjacent probably, and the Cs are are your tire kickers or your, or your students, all important folks to the industry, but not as important as as those A's. Um, determine who's uh, on your sales team, sales team should receive the leads. Do that. Do that type of follow up. Uh, make sure the list does get into your database. Uh, it's it seems so easy to to do, but I know that the first show that we did, I asked the question two weeks later. Well, did the list of everybody who stopped by and saw us get in the database? Like, well, not yet. All right. Well, you know, it seems basic, but if we don't talk about it, it doesn't necessarily get done. Um, and then uh, one of the unique things I was talking to one of our exhibitors and. He said that his plan with the leads is you know, you're developing a target audience and you're going to get your hundreds of leads and people who are interested in a product or service that you had. They're planning on doing a webinar or two after the show. You know, take the leads, understand what the marketplace wants and go back to the folks and say, hey, thanks for visiting our booth. Um, thanks. You know, I'm glad that you have interest in product X or, or service Y. Uh, we're going to do a live um your product webinar, we're gonna do a product demo on, on this date, two or three weeks after show, whenever you wanna do it. And again, make the show continue to work for you. I think during the show, the folks are gonna click on your videos, they're gonna they're going to look at different elements, but yeah, you're, you're engaging with them is kind of like the engagement that you have in a live show, which is for a couple of minutes. This is a way to take a really good list of leads and, and you know, dive deeper into the engagement with them. Um, Staying up on post shows, like the last slide, I believe, for post show, uh, you know, send your giveaways right away. If you sold if somebody wants something, they'd like to see those things, particularly before the holidays. That's, that's a good idea. Monitor the, the, the data feed, like I talked about earlier, the show's going to be open for a month uh, afterwards. So continue to monitor that. Um, and then I kind of I'll end where, where we started, you know, evaluate your performance against the objectives. The virtual shows, ours, others are going to be here for a while and we're going to you know, monitor ourselves and, and try to understand what's going on. But if you have set objectives from the outset, you know, did you accomplish those object objectives, you know, in line with the investment that you made in line with the, the personnel investment that you made and the time investment that you, that you made as well. Um, and then finally for me, we're going to do a post show survey. We do them all the time. Uh, I generally getting them back. Um, the parts that I don't like are actually the parts that we learn from the most. We, we need to hear, hey, this could have been better. We didn't understand this or, or you missed this. Uh, we, we are going to be on this platform, we believe, for probably another six months or a year until we get back to, to live shows. And so we want to make sure that we maximize the show for you. So when the survey comes out, you know, please let us know uh, how we did and how we can be, how we can be more effective. Um, I'm going to stop at that point and see, Alex, if there's a couple more questions we can answer. Yep. So is there a place for exhibitors to post their live webinar schedules that take place at their booths? Um, I think uh, probably one of the best places that they could post that, if that's news, where they would be in the newsroom um, under exhibitor um, news. Um, we've got a tab within that area. So. That's a good question. Let, let us follow up on that, though. I'm interested. Again, we're learning about the platform. So I'm interested in that, too. We want to help you all to be able to make sure that your webinars are that your schedule is going out. The other pipe, uh, the other area I would post would be in, certainly in social media. Uh, and I think depending on what the webinar is, I'd make a point of being in some of the chat rooms. If the webinar is geared towards pilots, you know, make sure you're going to the pilot chat room and you can generally remind people. We don't want it to be a big advertisement for anybody, but I think you can say, by the way, at 1.30, we're gonna have a webinar on this in our booth. And if you're interested, please stop by. I think that's well within bounds. Great. So what about small booths? Um, can they have live webinars at their booths? Yes. Um, in each of the booths, whether it's small, medium, or large, each of them have an opportunity. I know in a small booth um, probably allows them for one opportunity within their content area where they can host um, live webinars. Great. Um, and then a couple of questions about press conferences. So can anyone attend a press conference or is it only open to press? Yeah, press conferences um, are open to all. So if you can just remember that everybody that registers is an attendee for this event. And so they have access to all the different 
events and booths and uh, chat rooms that are taking place throughout um, throughout the event. And should they be live or pre-recorded? The the press conferences. Yeah, so that's a good. That's a really good question. We think that in this time period, you know, there's a couple of ways to attack. Is one is that you can really do some unique things with press conferences. I mean, if you have an aircraft that you're showing off, you can actually do your press conference in front of that aircraft. I mean, there's some really exciting, you know, fun things. So don't think about doing a press conference in a room or you know, we, as we do them typically. And you take advantage of, of you know, surroundings just to make them, them interesting. Uh, there seem to be two models for press conferences. We have seen a, a couple of pre-recorded press conferences uh, that have, uh, we anticipate, I've, I've seen a little bit. So where they do a pre-recorded pre -recorded press conference because you get the, you know, you work out all the kinks and the press conference is solid. And then the uh, people who are, are giving the press conference are available for Q&A afterwards. I and mean, I think important part of press conference is to be able to answer you know, uh, questions from the press. But if your executive or your communication team you know, would like to have a pre-recorded press conference, you can do that within your platform and then segue over to, to a live screen shot. That, that's, that's, super comfortable. A lot of the education that we're going to do for this show is actually pre-recorded because day of, it can get bumpy and you, you don't want to be in a situation where your, 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 your message is lost because your communication tool is not working. All right. So we are, I think, finished here and we have segued over to press successfully. I appreciate that very much. And so I'm going to reintroduce uh, uh, Matt Thurber and Chet. Uh, Chad Troutmetter, um, to you know, just discuss you know, how to sub submit news and, and uh, maybe be more effective in the press conferences that you're holding. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, uh, Matt's asked me to uh, talk about how to submit news, what you should submit, and how to do that. So um, I'm going to try to keep it general, not just to the show. I will say some things about the show, and specifically, um, it, not just fee-based, but all shows. Um, so what are we interested in? This is the question that everybody always asks me. So if you have a new product, a new service, um, if you're, if you're adding a new facility or expanding, um, or, um, if you hired or promoted somebody, um, and even if you have like deep knowledge of, you know, current trends in the industry, um, you know, those are all things we want to know. Um, you know, during the pandemic, you know, there was lots of, uh, stories about how charter operators were seeing, you know, new customers come in. That's, that's a great message um, to tell the press. So things like that, um, you know, and, and there's always new products and services announced around the show. So that's, this is the perfect time to uh, announce things. Um, a lot of businesses don't have formal marketing. Uh, there's, you know, this is a, there's a lot of small and smaller and medium sized businesses here. They don't have the marketing power of like a Gulfstream or Bombardier. Um, you don't need to. Um, you can generally write a press release or just give us information um, just by email. It doesn't have to be a formal press release, uh, but it does have to give us some information. And that's that's the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and how. So um, try to be descriptive. Um, you know, give us as much information as you can. Uh, if you want to give us quotes, that's even better. Uh, try to avoid using overused trite words like state of the art, innovative. I kind of cringe when I see those, um, but you know, you can hype up your product a little bit, but don't go overboard. Um, and then just give us a little bit of background information about your company. We may not, we may or may not be familiar with it, especially if we haven't heard from you before. Um, and also give us the, a contact name of who we can, uh, call or email to get more information. So that's important because we'll pro probably have follow-up questions. Um, and then you can send it by email. I suggest sending it as an attachment, uh, not as a web link. Um, we get a lot of spam and phishing uh, messages, so we're really hesitant to click on anything that might go to a, uh, a cloud drive or something like that. Um, images are always welcome and encouraged. Uh, and um, just just a note about shows. Uh, if you do have a new product that you're launching at the show, um, you may want to consider uh, not announcing it the week of the show. You may want to you may want to do it a little bit ahead of time. That allows us to put news out. 
um, and generate some interest so the people come to your booth to see what you got going on. Um, and then should you hold a press conference at this show? <laughs> this is a hard one. Uh, if you have additional information that isn't in your release or you think you can add substantially to that by having a press conference, by all means. Um, but you know, if it's just a, if you're just going to sit there and read the press release um, and really not adding any, any, any more information than what's, what's in there, um, you probably don't need to have a press release. So, or a press conference, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, in, in, if you have no news, please do not hold a press conference. I've been, I, I feel like I've been held hostage in a couple of press conferences what I couldn't get out, out of. Um, you know, it's, it's the company founder and he wants to tell us all about, you know, the history of the company. And it's interesting on some level, but it's just not, you know, news at a show. We get a lot, we get hit with a lot of stuff. Um, and uh, we get overwhelmed. We really need to prioritize, you know, news versus not news. So, Matt, do you have anything to add to that? Sure. Uh, there's a good question, Chad. We get a lot. Is, is there a cost associated with submitting a press release? And uh, the the answer is no. Um, this is this is uh, one of the ways we we learn about what companies are doing, and uh, we need we need to find out. When, and get this information. But if we write a story uh, that's generated by some news in a press release, there's no charge for that. That's not that's that's our that's our regular news we deliver to our readers. We don't have, we don't have to pay for that. And um, Chris, I'm a I. I don't think NBAA charges either for distribution of press releases at all, right? No, correct. Um, there is a charge to hold a press conference, I believe. Yeah, there's, there's a charge for all the setup for that. But yes, there's no there's no charge for just the, the releases. Yeah. So I mean, <clears throat> it, it, it's in your best interest as a uh, as a company with news to. Submit it not just to, to AIM, but to any other publication that might be covering the event. So, while we like we like it, if you think of us, uh, you know, don't don't just send it to us. There's other publications that will be covering things too. Um, but yeah, it actually actually on Matt's point, um, what I tell people is that if they're asked to pay. To run a news yeah. release, uh, don't just walk, run, because that's not yeah. how news operations work. Exactly. If somebody's telling you to to publish a press release, that's that's just another way of, of uh, paying for advertising. And just to point out, we do have the press roster that is on, on the VBase website for exhibitors that do want to reach out um, to the press with their news. And so that is readily available to exhibitors um, on our on the VBase website. Absolutely. And uh, for press conferences, Chad's right, it's really important to make the information uh, something that's interesting and compelling and not just of the company, which you know, which is obviously important information to the company, but it's got to be able to to capture the attention of the reader. There's got to be some kind of news angle to it, a new product, uh, a new service, uh, a new way of doing business, a startup company, something like that. Gentlemen, is there a, an email address that the exhibitors should send news to AIN? Yeah, I, I, I answered one of the questions for that with Chad's email address. He's he's the main okay. news contact at AIN, but um, Chad Chad's address is uh, just his first letter, last name at AINonline.com. So 
ccharlesvetter at aimonline.com. Yeah, my name's really easy to spell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, right. gentlemen, thank you. Are there any more you'd like to add? No, No, I mean, make sure people um, know that we we welcome hearing from from them. It's it's not, uh, hopefully, not an intimidating process. Please, please get in touch with us anytime. I was going to say, don't. Don't hold, you know, don't just do it during shows. Do it all the time. You know, whenever you have news, just reach out to us. We're always happy to hear from you guys. Uh, well, thank you both. You all are great partners to, to us, certainly, and great partners for the industry. We appreciate appreciate your uh, what you do and, and certainly your, your, your leadership and, and your contribution here today. Then to Peters, thank you uh, for the uh, exhibitors that are on the phone. Uh, you know how to get us. Uh, certainly, my my email is uh, I'm always out there. See strong at mba.org, and I think you all know Linda and her team very well. Uh, there's a lot of questions that we need to answer between now and in, in this show. We understand that uh, we're we are, we want to help you, so do not hesitate to to ask us uh, for help in any way. Uh, and uh, this has been recorded, so if you'd like to share this with your team, uh, feel free to do so. And I know that uh, the deck has also been. Uh, uploaded and so you, you'll have access to this uh, this deck. And with that, I, I bid you a good day. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chris.